Today we are going to shave an Edison wax cylinder on a regular machine lathe. Uh, this is a fairly small one and basically this is uh, the what you would need. Uh, you know, the, the, even the smallest ones are uh, powerful enough uh, to take care of what we need to do today. I'll be running this at uh, about 1000 RPM and the feed rate is going to be something like 2000th of an inch per revolution. Uh, the most important thing is that obviously you would need a mandrel uh, so you can put your cylinder on. Uh, I had this uh, Amrola one available to me. Uh, ideally you want one from uh, an Edison standard or a home. They have a shaft which will make life easier because you can just put uh, pass the shaft through the chuck. In this case obviously I have to make up this dead center. Uh, with that little bit of uh, aluminium there to drive this and again when you're buying the mandrel make sure that you get one uh, with a hole on this end because you want to run a, a life center to stabilize the whole thing so that goes there now I'm going to do a brown, very moldy brown wax today. I believe condensation and dampness causes the mold and you know this is now virtually totally totally useless. Uh, whatever recording there was on it, uh, you know, it just cannot be used again. It's uh, uh, the molded parts of it have become like uh, powdery so it's totally useless and uh, uh, we'll have to just undercut the mold. Uh, this is probably over, well, not def it's definitely over a hundred year old cylinder, maybe about 110 years old. So I'm gonna have to treat it with respect and cut the minimum amount that I need, but I do need to go undercut the mold. So we'll just go and see how bad this is. Before we do any serious cutting, uh, or we really need to make sure that the cylinder is in line with the mandrel. So I'm going to go all the way to one end. Turn the machine on, let it run and advance the cutter till it basically starts cutting not yet okay and I'm gonna make that my zero Then I'm gonna go back one whole revolution <clears throat> and come back to this end. And go back to my original zero again and see what the condition is. Okay. I'm gonna take the initial cut. I'm gonna take a cutting of uh, four thousandth of an inch. So I'll dial in. I went back to zero in here. Uh, so I'm gonna add four thousandth of an inch. And you can see it's already cutting and I'm gonna just engage the auto drive and we'll just see what's happening. Obviously it is cutting, looks pretty good. I'm using a carbon steel cutter, there is really no need, this is a soft material, there's really no need to use high speed steel or carbide. If you have them so much better, but 
you know, anything will do. And then what you're aiming for is a, a reasonably smooth finish. You don't really need to go as far as a mirror finish because do not forget that when you're re-recording re re on this, you will be cutting a groove. So your mirror finish is gonna be totally wasted and it will be an unnecessary attempt. This may not be as bad as I thought because it seems to be pretty clean with uh, a very light cutting of a thousand, four thousandth of an inch. I picked these uh, brown wax cylinders uh, from uh, on eBay and you know uh, occasionally some of them come molded like this and they're reasonably priced or uh, you know logically priced uh, but your other option if you're going to be doing some recording your other option is uh, you can contact uh, Victorola guy at gmail.com and the address is the Victorola guy stuck together at gmail.com. He has uh, some brown wax cylinders. They're pretty thick. So, you know, you can record and raise and record again, maybe about up to 10 times or whatever. Uh, and they're overall much cheaper than these brown wax cylinders. So, okay, we are at the end. We just stop, have a look. Okay, I think I got lucky on this. It's not perfect, but I think one more cut and we're done. And that cut's probably gonna be no more than uh, three thousandth of an inch. Yeah, I, I was expecting this to be much worse. Certainly looked bad. So. Okay, here we go again. Hopefully the final cut. Apart from the fact that, uh, you know, uh, regular phonographs are not powerful enough to do uh, serious cutting. Look at the mess that's created when you, uh, you know, shave a cylinder. I'm sure you wouldn't want your nice uh, old phonograph to get this messy. I've done a few of these and I find that uh, 1000 RPM is, is pretty, it's fast enough and uh, probably safe enough. I mean, I could run this much faster, but uh, I don't want the cylinder to shatter and fly all over the place. Uh, also, you know, getting hit in the face with a broken piece of uh, cylinder is not going to be very pleasant. We're almost done.
I think it's done. Let me just go and clean this up. I'm actually pretty sure it's done. So let me just blow it away, blow the dust away, and I'll be back. As good as you would want it. Absolutely no trace of any mold on it and it's smooth enough uh, to re-record on. Uh, if you don't have a recorder, uh, obviously those are again, they do come up uh, from time to time on eBay. A word of caution, uh, you need to find one that's complete and in a good condition. Uh, they're not easily repairable. Reproducers are, there are a lot of people who can repair reproducers for you, but recorders, no. If it's, it has anything wrong with it, it's totally worthless. It's not even worth buying it. Uh, I had to go to, through two or three purchases before I found a good one. Uh, the st stylus uh, is a problem. Uh, the body swells because it's pot metal, etc., etc. Anyway, uh, take care now. Hope you enjoyed watching this video and it's informative for you. Bye.